Today we will discuss about the pathologies of adrenal hormonal secretions. So first we will discuss about the Addison disease. Addison disease also called as adrenal insufficiency it is a disorder which occurs when the body does not produce enough steroid hormones especially cortisol and aldosterone. It can be multiple reasons uh, a few of them are mentioned here for example autoimmune atrophy of adrenal cortex if there is autoimmune destructions of the cells of adrenal cortex so it means the cells are not there so they won't produce the adrenal cortical hormones second is tubular destruction due to the tubular destruction again the cells are destroyed and they are not producing the sufficient hormones the last one if there is a cancer or uh, which is uh, compressing those cells or the cancer which inhibits the normal functioning of the cells then obviously this hormone will be low so what happens to them for example if there is a mineralocorticoid deficiency as you guys have already studied the aldosterone it causes the reabsorption of the sodium accompanied by the reabsorption of the water so when there is no aldosterone or there is less aldosterone it will lead to slight hyponatremia as we have discussed it already it won't be a grave hyponatremia because uh, due to its relative concentration due to reabsorption of the water or the secretion of the water it is maintained so it will also effect on the extracellular fluid volume when there will be less sodium reabsorption less water reabsorption so obviously the extracellular fluid volume will decrease again you guys have already studied the hyperkalemia occur because aldosterone causes the secretion of the potassium into the tubular lumen so if um, there is less uh, aldosterone the secretion of the potassium will not occur it will lead to the hyperkalemia and you know whenever there is a hyperkalemia it affects the muscular activity especially it can cause the uh, cardiac uh, abnormalities in the cardiac uh, uh, action potentials next is the mild acidosis as you know the aldosterone it causes the secretion of the hydrogen into the tubular lumen if there is no aldosterone so the hydrogen will not be secreted and when hydrogen will not be secreted it will get accumulated into the blood and it will lead to the acidosis acidosis is mild because there is always a respiratory compensation there are two organs which are two systems which are basically help to maintain the ph of the body one is the renal system another is the respiratory system so in this way the respiratory system will help to maintain the acidosis to take the ph back towards the normal so that's why it will be a mild acidosis next what will happen to the glucocorticoid deficiency so, now keep in mind all this mineralocorticoid deficiency though it is mm, due to, yes it can be due to the less amount of aldosterone but it can also be due to the less amount of the glucocorticoids for example cortisol so what happens in the glucocorticoid deficiency as you know the major effect of the cortisol hormone on the carb metabolism was to cause the hyperglycemia so because it causes the gluconeogenesis it causes the formation of it it used to decrease the entry of the glucose into the cells eventually it was causing hyperglycemia normally but here as you know that there is a deficiency of the glucocorticoid so it will lead to the hypoglycemia which can be threatening of course the next is that it reduces the mobilization of fats and proteins from the tissues because it was its normal function of the cortisol that it used to mobilize the fats and the proteins from the extra hepatic tissues to the hepatic tissues and to the blood so if it is not working there will be less utilization and the body won't be able to use that fat and the protein in case of excess need or excess demand whenever there is a case of uh, starvation and when there is a uh, stress condition body won't be able to use the proteins and fats next is the deteriorating effect of the stress yes it is due to because it cannot utilize those fat and protein for the energy in the fourth point it affects the infections especially respiratory infection why because the glucocorticoid it helps to maintain the stress it helps person 
to combat the infection so if glucocorticoid is not there so person will be more prone to the infections there is a condition which is associated with the addison disease which is known as the addisonian crisis addisonian crisis is due to the critical need of the extra glucocorticoid and associated debility in the times of the stress as you know at the time of the stress body needs more energy so that energy which body usually uh, used to get through the cortisol by the mobilization of fats and the proteins and uh, fat is used to cause the oxidation of the free fatty acid and body used to produce energy but here as there is less cortisol so body won't be able to cope that condition of the stress why because body cannot have extra energy so this is known as the addisonian crisis which is critical need of extra glucocorticoid and associated debility in time of the stress here body cannot provide extra glucocorticoid why because body is having addison disease okay this is a general description whenever ACTH is produced it is produced by the pre pro hormone is known as the pro opium melanocortin as you know whenever a protein is produced it gets you know, different kind of post translation modification it is produced into the pre pro hormone then pro hormone and then the final hormone whenever this ACTH is produced from this pre pro hormone which is known as pro opium melanocortin it is not produced alone as you can see there are other hormones which are produced in conjunction with the ACTH for example lipotropin, beta endorphins, gamma lipotropy and MSH Mel MSH is melanocyte, uh, melanocyte stimulating hormone which actually causes the darkening of the skin so keep in mind ACTH it also has the MSH like activity Basically, the major MSH-like activities is caused by the ACTH and also MSH obviously does cause the darkening of the skin because it causes the production of the pigmentation. Now keep in mind, whenever there is any abnormality which affects the more synthesis of ACTH, then obviously it will cause darkening of the skin. Why? Number one, because ACTH also has MSH-like activity and whenever ACTH is produced from the pre pro hormone here you can see MSH is also produced so due to these two reasons whenever there is any abnormality which is causing over secretion of ACTH it will cause the darkening or pigmentation of the skin here you can see the darkened skin obviously first you need to treat the cause if the cause can be treated for example through the tuberculosis destruction if it is you can give the anti tuberculosis drugs if it is it is not destroyed completely the some of the cells are there then yes the cause can be uh, alleviate the symptoms if there is a cancer accordingly treat and other is the first one is that you do remove the cause if the cause can be removed of course another is the orally administration of the glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids previously we have discussed that there are some synthetic uh, glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids which are actually more potent than the naturally occurring so yes as the re main reason in the addison disease was the deficiency of these steroid hormones so if you gave them orally the patient or you administer them so the patient can be treated okay next disease is the Cushing syndrome uh, now keep in mind all these syndromes which I am discussing here they are very important they repeat in the exam quite often what is a Cushing syndrome? Cushing syndrome is hyper secretion of adrenal cortex and causes a complex cascade of the hormonal effects with all this combined these effects is known as Cushing syndrome. Many of its abnormalities are ascribed to hypercortisolism which means more cortisol hormone but excess secretion of androgen may also cause some effects. So what is a Cushing syndrome? It is hyper cortisolism it can be due to the abnormal corticotropin release hormone uh, release well why more 
release will cause the more formation of ACTH, it will cause the more formation of steroid hormones or it due to the some abnormality in the pituitary for example pituitary adenoma it will cause the more ACTH release same is the case if there is ectopic secretion of ACTH for example there are some tumors of uh, other parts body or other parts of the cell for example some tumors of the kidney they also produce the ACTH then there can be abnormality with the adrenal cortex for example adrenal cortical adenoma which is a tumor of the adrenal cortex so obviously it will produce more cortisol and the final point if you are giving excessive uh, administration of glucocorticoids to the patient as we have discussed already the glucocorticoids have anti-inflammatory effect so we uh, give to the patients in number of conditions where our main cause is to the reduced inflammation so if there is excessive administration of glucocorticoids it can also lead to the Cushing syndrome and now keep in mind we have already discussed the glucocorticoid they do have the mineralocorticoid activity but normally they are released in an optimum amount but if there is abnormal release of the glucocorticoid it can also exert a mineralocorticoid effect we can divide the Cushing syndrome into the two types one is ACTH dependent Cushing syndrome and other is the ACTH independent Cushing syndrome ACTH dependent is those in which the ACTH secretion is more so ACTH secretion is more is increased either if there is a tumor of anterior pituitary obviously if there is tumor of anterior pituitary in the cells of ACTH secreting cell it will lead to the more ACTH or if there is a more CRH if there is more CRH obviously it will have positive effect on ACTH secreting cell and it will lead to the more ACTH the other type of Cushing syndrome is the ACTH independent Cushing syndrome it means it does not depend on the ACTH secretion but the abnormality lies in the adrenal cortex so it can be due to the adrenal tumor or adrenal hyperplasia or if you are giving exogenous glucocorticoid to the patient all these causes they do not depend on the ACTH secretion no matter if ACTH secretion is more or less as the cause lies in either adrenal cortex or exogenous glucocorticoid so we call it as the ACTH independent Cushing syndrome now it is a Cushing disease <clears throat> Though this terminology is uh, obsolete in the new papers and in the new research articles but still it does exist in our books uh, the physiology you will also get it in Sherwood and Guyton and indeed this question is repeated again and again in the viva and in the exam so you should know the Cushing disease is basically we call we call it Cushing's is when Cushing syndrome is due to excess secretion of ACTH by anterior pituitary it is called the Cushing disease so here it lies ACTH dependent Cushing syndrome when ACTH secreting tumor of anterior pituitary we call it as Cushing disease that is that limited part is called Cushing disease otherwise all other parts it cause the Cushing syndrome so Cushing disease when Cushing syndrome is due to excess secretion of ACTH by anterior pituitary it is called Cushing disease so you can see it is overlapping term now how do we distinguish between ACTH dependent and ACTH independent Cushing syndrome there is a method we call it as a dexamethasone suppression test it is a dexamethasone suppression test in which you give the patient a large dose of dexamethasone dexamethasone is basically a synthetic analog of the cortisol it has cortisol like activity but it is synthetic and it is more potent than a, a normal naturally occurring cortisol so what do we do when we give the large doses of dexamethasone to the patient if ACTH does not suppress you know normally a dexamethasone which is just like a cortisol it should have a negative feedback mechanism on the ACTH secreting cell or on the CRH secreting cell and it should inhibit ACTH secretion 
but if you are giving dexamethasone and acetate secretion does not suppresses it means that the the disease or the cushing syndrome is acth dependent so this is the acth dependent it means there was either a tumor of anterior pituitary or that of the crh releasing cells so no matter how much dexamethasone you give to that patient your acth will not suppress why because acth is not under the negative feedback control of this dexamethasone or the cortisol which is normally producing in the body on the other hand if you give the last dose of dexamethasone to the patient and acth suppresses it mean it is acth independent here you can see means there is some adrenal tumor or there was adrenal hyperplasia or there was exogenous glucocorticoids they will have a negative feedback effect on the acth secreting cell of the anterior pituitary of the crh recreasing cell on the hypothalamus so acth will suppress so in this way you can differentiate between acta dexamethasone suppression test because you can differentiate between acth dependent and acth independent question syndrome I want you guys to memorize this um, table because it will help you in diagnosis. Cushing disease, cortisol level high, ACTH high or normal. You know the reason why. Cushing syndrome, cortisol high and ACTH is low. In Addison, cortisol is low and ACTH is high. So what are the signs and symptoms of the Cushing syndrome? One is the buffalo torso. We have discussed it already due to the mobilization of the fats. At some point, it is more mobilized and at other points, it is less mobilized. So it gives a typical posture we call as the buffalo torso in which there is a more fat absorption in the upper part of the body. Next is the moon face shape. Here you can see the picture. It is due to the salt and water retention. Why? Because excess glucocorticoid it also has mineralocorticoid activity and also the facial obesity due to the fat mobilization. And third, it causes the hypertension. Why? Because of the yes, it can be due to the increased mineralocorticoid release, or it it is because the mineralocorticoid effect of the cortisol. Hyperglycemia, as you know that the normal function of the cortisol is to cause the hyperglycemia. If it is so much, then it can lead to the adrenal diabetes. Muscular weakness, why? Because we have discussed it already that cortisol causes the increased catabolism of the muscle and it decreases the synthesis of the muscle and it mobilizes the amino acids from the extra hepatic tissue with for example muscular tissue and lymphoid tissue to the liver so obviously it will lead to the muscular weakness it can be due to the fact that patient cannot stand up from the sweating position another point is the suppression of immune system yes suppression of immune system does occur why if there is decreased protein synthesis in the lymphoid tissue no proteins in the lymphoid tissue, no antibodies or, uh, or no and, uh, WBCs, RBCs and other cells, uh, so not RBCs, WBCs and other cells will be to the suppression of immune system. Subcutaneous tear or purple stria due to the depletion of collagen in subcutaneous tissue. Collagen is also a protein. So it is called as cortisol causes the mobilization of the protein from extra hepatic to the hepatic tissue. So due to the depletion of the collagen, patient will be having subcutaneous tears, tears in the subcutaneous area. And it, whenever there are tear, there will be a leakiness of the blood and it will give up a typical purplish color and we call it as the purplish stria. Now again due to diminish proteins in the bones, why? Because the proteins have been mobilized from the extra hepatic to the hepatic tissue. It will cause the weakness of the bone and we call this condition as osteoporosis. What can be the treatment? Obviously first is the removal of the cause. Whatever the cause the patient is getting so much exogenous glucocorticoids or there is a tumor, it can be of uh, hypothalamus, anterior pituitary or adrenal cortex. So first is the removal of the cause by the surgery or by radiation, whatever the way. 
second is steroidogenesis blocker there are some drugs which inhibits the synthesis of the steroid hormones for example metairapone and ketoconazole they inhibit the its uh, uh, synthesis the last one is the acetate secretion inhibitors if there is a problem with acetate secretion there are some inhibitors for example serotonin antagonist and gaba transamine inhibitors they can inhibit the secretion the next one is the cone syndrome in the cone syndrome it is basically due to the more release of the mineralocorticoid it is a tumor of the zona glomerulosa cell usually it is caused by the tumor of zona glomerulosa cell in which there are more mineralocorticoids so we have discussed the uh, effects of mineralocorticoid or aldosterone again and again again i give you idea whenever there is more mineralocorticoid or you say there is more aldosterone what will happen it will cause more sodium reabsorption more water reabsorption ecf volume will increase and hypertension will occur then it will cause hypokalemia why because it will secrete the potassium ion whenever there is a hyperkalemia normal action potential depolarization depolarization process of the nerves and the muscle it cannot be made so it will lead to the paralysis there is mild alkalosis why because aldosterone causes release of more hydrogen ion it secretes the hydrogen ion in the tubular lumen so when hydrogen ion are released it will lead to the alkalosis why it is mild obviously here also due to the respiratory compensation what is the diagnostic criteria in diagnostic criteria obviously you will get all the signs and symptoms plus there will be decreased plasma renin concentration why renin concentration will be low because renin is released when there is hypotension but here in this case it is hypertension so renin will be low in the body treatment is to uh, treat the cause obviously here is usually the cause is the tumor of the zona glomerulosa if the surgically remove or you remove it through the radiation next is the adrenogenital syndrome as we have discussed the adrenal cortex also produces the sex hormones so whenever there is an abnormality with the production of the sex hormone there it leads to the adrenogenital syndrome for example in the female it leads to the virile characteristic the characteristic which are specific for the males for example growth of a beard deeper voice baldness distribution of hair on the body or uh, for example on the especially on the pubis and in the armpits growth of the clitoris to resemble the penis and deposition of the fat in it and all the masculine characteristics if there are more release of the female sex hormones it uh, if there are more release of the sex hormones in the females it will lead to the all these characters in the females now in the prepubertal males same characteristics all the which i've discussed already they will occur as in the females and there is a rapid development of the male sexual organs in the adult males though all the uh, uh, genital organs they have already synthesized but the adrenogenital syndrome that's where they are usually obscured by the normal virilizing characteristics of the testosterone because in the adult males all the uh, male secondary and the primary sex characters they have developed already so it will be difficult to diagnose that condition because a a patient can confuse it because the normal testosterone it also causes all these same effects like deeper voice baldness growth of a beard so it will be difficult to diagnose the adrenogenital syndrome of 